Okay, class. So in front of the camera is a sphere that is lit from above, more or less from this direction here. So we can see that the there are the seven elements of form that are being represented in this three-dimensional object. Um, we have the highlight, meaning the highest key. Um, and I will discuss all of this when I do the demonstration. Um, I just wanted to show you guys physically how it looks. Um, and I will talk through all the stages. The one thing that I do want to show you in this demonstration here, or this uh, image here of the sphere, is that the reflective light is an elusive thing um, and is sometimes difficult to understand, but I'm going to show you how we can locate it um, and how it changes depending on what the object is close to. So if it's closer to a vertical surface, we're gonna get an effect that is more or less like this. And we can see now how the reflective light is um, because it's an orange card, we can see that the reflective light is orange. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a sphere. So the sphere is a way of describing volume and form. So we're going to reorganize the values that we've done in the value scale and put them in the sphere. So in this case, we're going to use the um, photocopy. So at the very beginning, uh, and I'll again put a screenshot um, to show you what the physical sphere looks like and how light reacts to an object and how reflective light can be um, discerned by changing just uh, kind of the background color. Um, and I used an orange swatch to do that. Okay, so in this case here, our highlight, I'm just going to go ahead and place a marker on it, is right here. So we can also see, see from the edge of the sphere to the shadow edge creates an angle which will give you the projection of the light. So in this case here, we have a projection that is going something like so. It's good to understand where the light is coming from. So we have to understand the physics of light and time. So light only travels in a straight line. There's a, a primary beam of light, then there's secondary, tertiary, and so on and so forth. The further away you get from the primary, the less intense the light is. So, and that will go the same as the actual object. So where the primary beam of light hits the object will be the highest key. So in a way it's an absence of color if we were to do this in color. So the light is so intense that it washes out our ability to see the color. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're gonna go all the way across the sphere. Uh, where's my ball stick? left it on the table. I'm just going to go ahead and do a base coat. I'm using an HB pencil. And I'm trying to keep the value light. Now you can see without the mull stick, you know, my the pressure on the pencil changes ever so slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and get my mall stick. I'm going to pause the video. Notice that I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did in the value scale, which is going past the edge. Okay, I'm just going to pause it for a second and get my mall stick. Okay, so it's just good to have your tools and use them. So don't leave it in the other room. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my edges. Try not to take out the shape of the sphere. So use your kneaded eraser. You know, don't start right on the edge, kind of work your way into the sphere. 
or to the edge of the sphere, sorry. Doesn't have to be perfect. So, and I just realized that the value was dark because I was using a 4B. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my fan brush and I'm gonna bond that whole layer together, which is also gonna pull up a little bit of the value. Okay. And now I'm gonna come back with an HB. and my mall stick. I think we're going to be okay. Notice I'm always going in the same direction, the exact same process that we use in the value scale, we're going to use in the sphere. And when we're creating the figure, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go in more or less at a 45 degree angle. So basically we want to be able to cover whatever surface we are with the least amount of resistance. So. Do not create vertical shadow lines because, you know, if you're doing it from like torso to leg, that's a huge line that you have to create. You want to be able to navigate and create these without seams in between. And I'll discuss that a little bit more once we start the actual figure uh, process. This is all leading us up. So, um, you know, my teacher, you know, says we're setting up the foundation skills without necessarily overwhelming you with the figure in front. So once you have the figure, you'll already have this um, knowledge and it will be uh, hopefully second nature. Okay, so we have the point of impact somewhere around here. One thing to note is that that highlight is never going to be on the edge, right? Because the edge is turning away from you. So that highlight is closer to you. So in this case, it's going to be somewhere around here. And again, I'm going to create this kind of oval effect. And that's good enough for now. So remember, we're not finishing this drawing, we're setting up all the parameters. Notice that it's got this arc kind of effect happening here. So we're following because the form is actually going this way. So we want to be able to follow that form. So if we, you know, if I do this here, in, if I was to cut this in half, it should be something like so, okay? so. We cannot, if we do something like this, it's going to flatten the image. So again, try to understand what you're looking at, right? We're looking at something that has volume, that has, you know, mass to it. So, and we're trying to create that form just by creating um, a variations in value. So we have our highlight, we have our midtone. Our midtone now is just basically a value, looks like it's closer to a value number um, three. So I may increase the actual um, highlight just to give me a value two. That's gonna all get cleaned up anyways. Okay, so my core shadow is here. So, and it's darker here, and then it starts getting consumed a little bit um, by what's happening with the tabletop here. So basically, I'm going to start here. I'm gonna create this arc kind of effect like so. And I'm gonna stop it right there because it looks like it starts blending in a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna follow kind of that that same idea 
to clean this up just a little. It's gotta look like it's wrapping around. Anything below this line is part of the shadow area. So our base coat, so, and our base coat here, this is gonna end up being our reflective light. So our reflective light is gonna be a value five or six. So we don't wanna get the base coat darker than that. This is an HB pencil, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a 2B. Notice that I'm going past the edges and I'm gonna actually clean up Okay, my 2B now, let's get that. Okay, so I'm gonna start here and slowly put in a layer. And I'm changed the angle ever so slightly because it's gonna make my life easier. This is too hard to go all the way that way. Okay, so that looks pretty close. I wanna leave myself a little bit of room to be able to get a little bit darker if I need to. So my teacher used to say, it's a lot easier to get go darker than it is to try to lighten something up. So I'm going to veer on the side of caution and give myself the option of getting darker. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up my four. Uh, 4B pencil now because I want to create a core shadow. This is a core shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and straddle that line and start creating that core shadow. Now the, the core shadow looks like it gets pretty wide over here and kind of thins out over here. So um, I am aware of that. I'm just starting to create it as a, a linear line initially, and then I'll start expanding on it. And what I'm also doing is, once I create this projection line, you can see there's too big of a jump between this value, so I'm gonna have to address that. So I'm, when I put in this base coat, I'm gonna go slightly over that edge.
potential. You can actually see there's a little bit of a halo starting to happen on this side here. I'm gonna create kind of a stump on my kneaded eraser. So there's just a little bit of a darkening down here. So I'm just gonna dabble that line that's starting to get to show up there. Okay, clean this up. Now, in order to start finishing this up, I need to go ahead and put the cast shadow. Because this part down here will never look right until I have the correct kind of environment. So in one of the handouts, I talk about, you know, drawing is based on a series of questions and answers. So this is a perfect example of that. So I'm squinting my eyes, I'm saying, you know, is this too light, too dark, or the same? You know, is this shape over here starting to get distorted? So based on the answer, if the answer is the same, I just move on to the next question. If the answer is it is starting to get distorted, how is it starting to get distorted? What do I need to do in order to fix that? And I fix it. And then I go back and say, now does it look the same, better, different, or not the same? And so on and so forth. And I'll keep doing that until the answer is what I need it to be which is the same as the mask. So I'm doing circles to start softening up that edge. Now let's just say that I wasn't able to see there's like a little bit of a dark line. Again, I would take my kneaded eraser and I would slowly Dabble that away. So now I've eliminated that line. I think overall the whole reflective light is going to need to get a little bit darker. So I'm going to put a base coat. This is a 4B pencil. And I'm putting it over the whole thing so that reflective light will remain lighter as long as I put it everything a value on it. I'm going to clean it up and then I'm going to put start putting in the cast shadow. Now keep in mind I'm not grading you on whether you have a perfect circle at the end of the day. Um, what I want is that you understand this process, that you take the time to develop that process you can see that I am taking quite a bit of time to build up those values. And I'll keep refining it over and over and over again. So it looks like my highlight has gotten a little bit muddy, so I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to use a 2B, so my cast shadow is going almost to the edge here and it looks like it's running I'm gonna use uh, let's say I'll use this here the, so it looks like it starts here and again it's going to be kind of a elliptical effect once I have this one I can find out where the other one is so it starts here so it's gonna go here and then it starts turning and comes back around like so. I don't want to go right to the edge. The cast shadow looks like it's gonna need to be a little bit longer than what I'm a little too close to that uh, value scale demo so I'm just gonna alter it a little bit. But at least you know how to do this. 
and then also even just along the edge here. Once you've got this marker here, um, I guess I would use the highlight to locate this and then triangulate and locate that there. Okay, so same process. So I'm gonna put in a base coat. I'm gonna go in at an angle because it's gonna make my life easier. Try to make the value flat. You can notice that the edges are much sharper the closer you are towards the object. So the further out you go, the softer the edge.
So now that I have that, I can see that this value is too light up here. I'm gonna start keying that down. Now here I just want to make subtle little changes. I don't want to get like huge value shifts because then I run into some problems, right? Again, it's easier to darken something down than it is to try to make major changes. So, you know, it looks like there's a band here of uh, light, but it looks like it could get a little bit softer right in here. You know, the last mile of a drawing or anything is always the hardest, right? Because you've got to make these subtle little changes that could make the drawing better. Um, if you push it too far one way or the other, it actually could do the opposite effect. So you've got to be real careful here that we're, we're making little changes See like this value in here, a little bit darker against that background. Now, ideally I should also make the background because there is a value um, in the background, but I'm keeping the paper white. So, you know, that is also distorting a little bit. have the demonstration on the value scale and the sphere so I would probably come back in uh, now and just look at some line quality so it looks like there's a darker line and then it looks like it softens up a little bit and then also becomes a slightly darker line right in here like so. demonstration on the value scale and sphere you know of course I could keep tweaking this over and over and over again and I would I would keep I would probably take a break actually and get a coffee or whatever and then come back with a fresh eye and evaluate everything that I've done and see if I need to push it further like I see that like, overall this whole cast shadow needs to be darker Oh, I would just put a base coat over that whole thing, et cetera, et cetera. 